Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Shavu Ato Mevorach to everybody. Today, the ninth day of Elul, corresponding to the fifth day of uh, today's class, graciously sponsored by the Sultan family, Le'ayui Nishmat, the beloved father. Sponsored by the Sultan family, Shalom. Additionally, <coughs> by Eli and Sarah Levi, Le'ayui Nishmat, her beloved grandmother. Yafa Bat Esther Weintrop, eh, Alea Shalom, Iratzon, the to the words of Torah, then Neshamot, Havan Aliyah, in Gan Eden, Amen. So, so, yesterday night we have the Zechut of welcoming Rabbi Eli Mansur eh, to our eh, beautiful synagogue. We had a beautiful full house, and as always, you know, the excitement is in the air when we get to hear magnificent words of Torah. Since I believe that I Torah. God willing, will provide us the file a bit later. Uh, I'm going to skip, but I'll give you maybe one or two minutes just introduction to what he said. So he explained how the relationship between Yaakov and Esav, Rivka and Rabbi Akiva, have a direct connection to the month of Elul. In the recording, you will be able to follow that. Additionally, the rabbi reinforced an imperative topic that a person must always gravitate not only to good people, but a person must always be part of something good. As the Mishnah writes in Pirkei Avot, Forever the person should be the tail of the lion and not the head of the foxes. The lions represents good people, good influence, and the foxes, you know, the wise guys, the problematic, the troublemaker. So it says one of the of the messages of the month of Elul is gravitate towards the good and stay away from what's not good. In the book, in the book of prayers, or in the Sidur, thank you so much, from the Tehillim that says, Sur mera Stay away from wrong and do good. The moment that a person starts doing good, automatically the person stays away from negatives and it says this makes a huge a huge difference when it comes to the judgment of the person what kind of parameter what kind of barometer shamayim will utilize for the judgment of the person is going to be the troublemakers level or the good people that always uh, you know succeed and flourish in life so I gave you literally less than two minutes summary of what was the main points of the uh, shiur. So by Ezzet Hashem, once the file is uploaded, Beli Nether will share it with the Kahal Kadosh. But remember that I have an open invoice with all of you. Uh, we still are catching up on Tomer Devorah number 7, 8, and 9. Today is the ninth day. So Beli Nether, with Hashem's help, I'll try in the next few minutes to cover these three a message is so tomorrow, Beli Nether, we are in the current day. So there is a pasuk from the book of Micha that says, Betashlich bin Sulot Yam Kol Hatotam. This is a very famous pasuk because it's part of our daily prayers and is the foundation of the prayer known as Tashlich. What's the meaning of the meaning of these particular words? Betashlich, and you will cast to the depth of the ocean all the shortcomings of the Jewish people. And that's why we do tashlich. We do tashlich symbolically, what do we do? We empty our packets. Now I ask you a question. What do you have in your packets in Rosh Hashanah? If you come to my packets today, you'll see a receipt, you'll see a wallet that is made out of plastic, plastic, only plastic, and maybe a few dollars for sedaka. That's what you're gonna find in my packets, okay? So now, what are you going to find in the day of Rosh Hashanah? Hazak So it says, we make the symbolic motion of casting away our sins into the deepest part of the ocean to the point of no return. Now, what does this mean from a godly perspective? At the end of the day, we all know this already, that the message of Tomer Deborah is to combine the godly aspect and the human intervention. Now, are you saying that humans are God are very close to each other based on last night's class? Yes.
are very close to each other based on last night's class? Yes. Gal rabbis. That was the message last night, which I didn't say openly. But if those who were here remember what he said, he gave you a lot of tabot last night when he spoke about the teens. Yeah, he says, he says in investment, he told me this after the class. He says, one of the most essential parts of the community is besides the adults and the families and the very young children is the most critical age today in society is being a teenager. Being a teenager and surviving all the challenges and all the nisyonot that our generation is experiencing as a whole. So don't worry about it. We're going to talk later something very good that he suggested. So one of the messages that Rabbi Moshe Cordovero says, and I'm going to say this only because he says it, okay? I don't have the power or authority to say it, but I'm going to say what he said. He says here, and for those that were here on Shabbat, heard me make, making the special prayer composed by the Tosafot Yom Tov, Rabbeinu Yom Tov Levi Heller, the one who wrote the Tosafot on the Mishnayot. Like the Gemara has Tosafot, the Mishnayot has Tosafot. And it's called Tosafot Yom Tov. And he composed a special prayer for those who don't speak during the prayers. He says a special prayer for those that preserve the sanctity of the synagogue, that don't talk during Kaddish, Hazara, Sefer Torah, and overall through the prayer. And he showers the person with an exorbitant amount of blessings. Not only the blessings written in the Torah, but also the blessings written in the Nevi'im and the Ketubim. And the question is, Farmus, why? To our Ashkenazic audience, why? Why such a prayer is composed? So we need to understand a bit of history, and that's going to be my springboard to what Rabbi Moshe Cordovero says on this verse that I just quoted. So the Tosafot Yom Tov uh, came to the world in a moment that it was a very dark chapter for Jewish history. This was called Gezerot Tah Betat. The year 1648-1649, that there were hundreds of thousands of our brethren in uh, Europe that were killed by the Cossacks in the pogroms. No, the Crusades were 500 years before. The Crusades was 200 years before the Inquisition. It came the Crusades, the Inquisition, and then came this uh, program, Gezerot Tah Betar. And hundreds of thousands of Jewish people, men, women, and children, were killed. Literally. Now, among those victims, just for you to relate to the historical chapter of this uh, tragedy, was a great Mekubal by the name of Rabbenu Shimshon Miostropodi. He was the one who wrote the special prayer to be recited once a year, Erev Pesach. That many people do it, including in our synagogue. But if you go to itorah.com, you'll see that prayer. It says, special prayer for Erev Pesach. What's so special? That is a prayer for protection. Why? Because on Erev Pesach, in the Kabbalistic books, it says that there is a change in the heavenly judicial court system. All the soldiers and all the matters involved to judgment have a change of guard. And this happens specifically at a Pesach. So we take advantage of those few moments that there is a change of guard in order to insert our prayers for protection. So when the new guard men come, so we come in with a clean slate, beautiful. So he was one of the victims, together with hundreds of his Torah yeshiva students, also great Talmidei Hachamim. I don't want to be so graphic, but regretfully they were all executed inside of the Bet Midrash. 
They would all gather into the synagogues. They surrounded the buildings with chains, not allowing anyone to escape. And this is regretfully how they perished. And we know that whenever tragedy strikes the Jewish people, we turn to Akadosh Baruch Hu. That's a normal formula. If God forbid a person hears a tragedy, or a person, God forbid, is in an accident, what is the first thing that we say? Shema Israel. You don't say, let me call your husband, let me call my father, let me call my wife. What do we say? Shema Israel. And this was the reaction of the Tosafot Yom Tov. Says the Tosafot Yom Tov, I don't understand how such a calamity can affect the Jewish people. And in the, in the holy books, talks about She'elat Halom. She'elat Halom is something not very common, but it's something that certain Sadiqim have access to. What is this? This refers to a person through fasting and Teshuvah can turn to Hashem with a question. God, I need to know why this happened. Why this tragedy? Guess what? He got the answer. And the answer is not a nice, a good answer. The answer is scary. You know what was the answer given to him? The Jewish people lack protection. Now, the question is, why are we lacking? Don't we eat kasher? Don't we have mezuzot? Don't we put on tzitzit? Don't we put on tefillin? Don't we donate? We do all of the above. God says true. But there is one area which you need to invest upon which is not attended to. You know what was the heavenly answer? Kedushat Beta Knesset. The sanctity of the synagogue. Not only in the dress code, specifically in talking. And that's why the prayer that he composed, the Misha Berach, is for those that they don't talk during the prayer. Now, where does Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, no, Mejia, where does Yotosafot Yom Tov takes this answer, and from this answer, he makes a prayer, which I will tell you, Sephardic synagogue say this prayer once a year. Pirashah Shofeti. Because that's the, the, the annual Tosafot Yom Tov Shabbat day. You know that in some Ashkenazic synagogues, they recite this prayer every Shabbat. Every Shabbat to reinforce this concept. Now, we're not going to change our tradition, but I'm only creating an awareness. The question goes back. Where the Tosafot Yom Tov learns that because of this, this happens. Short answer, the lesson that we are learning today. It says, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, Sheare Israel Hatu. The Jewish people sin. What happens? Ya'ak Paro, Sanherib, Haman. God says, okay, Haman, be ready. I need you to wake up my children. Paro, I need you to wake up my children. Sanherib, I need you to wake up my children. So what does it mean? That as much as we don't like or dislike, Haman, Sanherib, and Paro. The people Moshe Cordovero says, you don't like them, you change. You want to get rid of them, you change. When I say you, means you and I and everyone else. Because at the end of the day, says the people Moshe Cordovero, Morea Aulian sends messages to Ham Israel through the power of the enemies. He's a anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is dangerous. Anti-Semitism, I must say, is having a resurrection in America. Follow the Jewish news, and you will hear what's happening all over. Colleges. Forget about colleges. In Brooklyn, Flatbush, Borough Park, Williamsburg, Florida, Orlando, Miami, do you know the amount of anti-Semitism that is being spreading like a gangrene in America? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 
to the point that I heard that CNN did a whole study about anti-Semitism. If I never saw it, I didn't see it, I don't want to see it. But it was already all news. Between now and then, there were at least 10 attacks against Jewish people. Out of nowhere, out of nowhere, you're going to shul, you're going to work, you're taking the subway, whatever it means. And guess what? Doesn't matter the kippah or no kippah. Doesn't matter where. Now the question is, why is this happening? I will tell you why. Because anti-Semitism, like Rabbi Moshe Cordovero says, is a wake-up call from God. Even though that from the news channel, we can point the finger to a sole perpetrator who did something against an innocent person, and we don't know why this is happening or why this person and not someone else, like they show they try to attack two, but they only were able to attack one Jew. Going to shul at 5 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning. Okay? Like when usually people are in their home sleeping, etc. Now, we're not going to stop going to shul, God forbid. Okay? Because the moment that we do that, we're only attracting more and more and more. But according to what we are learning from the Bimoshe Cordovero, it seems that through the power of Teshuvah, that we are able to eradicate. And one thing is for sure, what anti-Semitism brings besides fear? The Shuba. Regretfully, there is one area in Judaism that requires a reinforcement. Besides the sanctity on the synagogue, basically unity among the Jewish people. Unity and harmony among the Jewish people. And if you don't understand what I'm referring to, just look at the Israeli news. See what's happening now with the upcoming elections. Sure, a lot of disasters at, low, at all levels, at all levels. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam she'akol nihiyah v'tbarah. So, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero in this gives a very lengthy explanation, mostly quoting Kabbalistic source about Nebuchadnezzar, for example, what Nebuchadnezzar represented, how Nebuchadnezzar was a human representative of the, of the male version of the Yeser Ara in the world. I'm not going to use the word because it's not proper, but it's connected to the $100 bill. You know, people go up to the Torah, right? Usually people give 101. Why do you give 100? 101 is Malach Michael, the protecting angel of the Jewish people. 100 is the male aspect of the Yeser Ara. His nickname is 100, Samach Mem. Michael is 101. That's why we give 101 when you go to the Sefer. You want to give 102, that's Emunah. You want to give 104, that's four times Hashem's name, Yod Ke Vav Ke. You want to give 1,010, that's 10 times Michael. Okay? So remember that when you go up to the Sefer. Okay, I'll take 1800 if it's too difficult for you, the 1010. Sounds like a radio station, 1010 news. 1010 news. Right, you call New York sometimes, they put me on hold. I get to know what's going on, you know, in the New York area. GW and the LIRR, whatever. So let's, let's now, yes, let's now go to plan B. We understood more or less God's formula. We behave good, peace and harmony. We don't behave good, wake up call. So how do I transfer this deep message? Because for me, this message is very deep. And I must clarify, I gave you the short version. So what does that mean for us? So it says as follows. In this attribute, 
a person must conduct themselves with their friend, with a fellow man. What does it mean? Sometimes you see someone suffering. Suffering, God forbid. So I can say two things. <clears throat> Hazit. You know what Hazit means? Nebach. Misken. Misken. Pobrecito. Pobrecito. Or I can say, what's the big deal? God is punishing him or her for their sins. Has the shalom. It says, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, you're not allowed to even think of that. To s that the person themselves says, you know what? Something is going on with me. I need to do Heshbon Hanefesh. I need to do my own soul searching to understand why I'm going through this medical situation or why I'm going through this a, a, a financial situation, whatever it may be. But another person will say, oh, he's going through this because he's X, Y, Z. It says to be Moshe Cordovero, don't you dare think or say this about the suffering of your brother. So what you should do, it says, Mirahem alav. Pray for him. <laughs> Pray for him that HaKadosh Baruch Hu should activate the Rahamim. Now we need to know one thing, Rabotai. No one knows why we go through things in life. And if we think that we know, we are probably not know. Why not? Because besides our life, day-to-day -day life, when we are born, we are born with an open invoice. That's why we are called Gilgulim, reincarnations. What does it mean, reincarnations? I don't really know what that means, but I'm going to tell you what I understand what it means. Neshamot come through, through the history of humanity, through the history of the world. And not all the time, the mission is fulfilled. Sometimes, we feel we fulfill our mission, but parallel to that, we created new debts. We created new sins. So therefore, we need to take care of those as well. And therefore, Shamayim gives the person a second round, a second opportunity, or a third opportunity sometimes. First as a human, then as animals, and then as objects. Sometimes could be even trees. And that's one of the Kabbalistic reasons of Birkat Ha'ilanot that we discuss in the month of Nisan, that there are certain souls that become reincarnated as a tree, including souls of our parents. And that's why we say the blessing in order to elevate and to make the tikkun for that. That is too deep, but I have the Sidur in front of me. Check out Birkat Ha'ilanot, and you're going to see the blessing for the trees, and you're going to see exactly what I just said. But let's concentrate in the simple life. Maybe, you know, I'm helping, you helping me today because 300 years ago, I helped you. Like many stories of the Baal Shem Tov goes, that situation happens, including Shiduchim, or people helping others, or people working for each other, simply because there is a sequel of something that transpired many generations back, and Hashem gives the opportunity I gave him a jab because his great-grandfather gave my great-grandfather a jab 300 years ago in Egypt or in Turkey or in Spain, whatever the family may have lived. So we don't know to say, oh, this person is going through this because of this or that. Says Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, don't put your mind into that. Pray that Hashem has mercy and compassion for the person. The next message. Titen emet le Yaakov. Give the truth to Yaakov. Now, this is a pasuk also for the prayers. So it says the following. In the name of the Jewish people, there are two titles. Yaakov and Israel. 
the Benish High explains the discrepancy between these two names, including the distance of numbers. What's the meaning, the numerical value of the word Israel? What's the numerical value of the word Yaakov? And the discrepancy, there is a hidden Kabbalistic message. Maybe one day we'll do it. But I'll tell you the Peshat. Yaakov represents to a name of the Jewish people in a simple level. Israel represents in a loftier, in a holier, in a bigger, in a larger level. That's why Yaakov comes from the word Ekev, the hill, the lowest part of the body, and Israel means Sari El Mehila, <coughs> direct connection with the Kadosh Baruch Hu. So it says as follows. There is a midah called Emet. The truth. The Gemara writes, Hotamo shel HaKadosh Baruch Hu Emet. The rubber stamp of God is the truth. You want to find godliness? The truth is part of the equation. God is not 99.7 like the bacteria soap that says 99.9, .9, okay? God is 100% truth. And therefore it says that this is how Hashem conduct himself with us, and this is how we conduct ourselves with others. What does it mean? Always follows the emet, always follows the truth. The essence of the Torah is the truth, Moshe emet, the Torah emet. Moshe is the truth, and the Torah is the truth. And it says that what, even when it comes to judgment, you're not allowed to deter the judgment to be nice. Let's say that there is two litigants, one wealthy and one poor. And you need to make a decision on the ruling. Part of your brain says, the poor men can benefit from some of the money of the rich men. So I'm going to say that the rich loses and he must pay $5,000 to the poor men so the poor men can have a certain peace of mind. The intentions are holy, but from a Laha perspective, it's forbidden. You're not allowed to do that. Lo takiru panim ba mishpat, the Torah says. You're not allowed to recognize faces in judgment. Or you're going to do the opposite. The poor man is right. He's entitled to collect from the rich man. But I'm going to embarrass the rich man that he needs to pay the poor man. So I'm going to side with the rich man to protect his honor. You know what the Torah says? Both are wrong. Even though your intentions are holy and pure. There is no more beautiful mitzvah than helping a destitute person to lift someone that is down or to protect the honor. God is willing to allow his name to be erased to preserve the sanctity of marriage. So you as a judge wants to preserve the honor of the wealthy, so you want to do something good. The Torah says you're doing a mega avon and you're going to pay the price because even though you gave the wrong ruling in purpose, we're not saying like we learned on Shabbat, that Sanhedrin made a mistake. We follow the ruling of the Sanhedrin. We accept the ruling. There is differences in mistake. One is an unintentional mistake, and one is an intentional mistake. I'm talking about the Mezid protocol. I'm talking about the Mezid, the Mezid protocol, not the unintentional mistake. And therefore, it says the Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, you display mercy, but you cannot turn judgment against them simply because you want to be nice. And the second part of the Pasuk says, Hesed le Abraham. What's the meaning of the word Hesed le Abraham? There are two ways of judging people, giving the, per the person the verdict or the benefit of the doubt. Benefit of the doubt is beneficial. Let's say that you're not dealing with two plaintiffs. Now you're dealing with one 
person. No case. You see someone that walk in late to the synagogue. Okay? And you say to him, why do you come late? Can you come early like a normal person? That's judging the person. But if you say, oh, maybe he needed to take the kids to school. Maybe he wasn't feeling well. Maybe he needed to go to the bathroom. And the Allah says, if you need to go to the bathroom, and you need to pray with the minyan, which takes president? The bathroom. The bathroom. The bathroom takes president over praying with the minyan. Obviously, you're going to plan yourself accordingly. You're not going to wake up late in purpose. I know you need to go to the bathroom. OK, that's used. That's good for one time, two times. But the third time, you become a repeat offender. Yeah. God forbid. But that's what it says here. It says that the precise judgment connects to the truthfulness of Yaakov and the kindness and the benefit of the doubt and thinking about the person in a favorable manner goes to Abraham Avino. Interesting enough that we don't quote Ishaq on that pasuk. We say Yaakov and Abraham. Why we don't say Ishaq? Because Ishaq is connected to judgment. Ishaq means judgment. Guilty or innocent. No benefit of the doubt. No, tomorrow will be a better day. The sun will come out tomorrow again. Ishaq doesn't deal with that. Ishaq is a straight shooter. No shahita, but he's enough. Close enough. So therefore it says that even though you may want to be shahita, like he said, but train yourself to go lifnim mishurat haddini. Go above and beyond the letter of the law. You know why? Because the Gemara guarantees that every action it brings a boomerang effect in the life of the person. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. I'm thinking about you in a good, positive way. Shamayim will reciprocate to me as well. But if I become very judgmental, and I said, oh, this guy, he always comes late. This guy, he talks a lot. This guy, he, in other words, I suddenly becomes the sheriff and the executioner, and the officer and the judge. Okay, and I am the one who, I could be anyone, God forbid, to always being on the judging mode, guess what? That activates judgment against the person. And that is not good. Not for you, not for your family. Third message. Today's current message. Asher nishvata la aboteno min mekele. That you sworn to our forefathers from the early days. Which means what? God made a promise that the Jewish people will always be connected with Hashem. Doesn't matter what, doesn't matter where, doesn't matter which generation, which century we live, and we are the living proof of that. Look at us. We have been in exile for close to 2,000 years. We, have went, we went through every imaginable threat and atrocity and, 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 and danger as a nation, individually and collectively. And yet, we are alive and well as a nation. Yes. And where does that come from? It says that is from the commitment that God gave Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. That's the commitment that he gave. And it says that even though that many times the person or the nation or a group of people may not be deserving if we judge by the performance. You know, sometimes you have a performance review in a company. Yeah. Shamayim also has a performance review. And yet we see that despite that the performance of the person may have not been the way it should have been, yet we see that the person's lives continues with all the gadgets and all the good things, etc. And he says, where this comes from? It says the Basuk in Perashat Kitisa, Gehanoti et asher ahon, Berihamti et asher arahem. I will show favor whom I choose to show favor, 
and I will show compassion whom I choose to show compassion. Explains to me Moshe Cordovero. Yesh otzar hanunim shenikra matanat hinam. There is an overdraft protection system nice. in Shamayim. That even though the person may not be entitled, because of their performance, because of their review, because of their actions, God says, I know, don't worry. Continue flushing money into their account. Continue blessing them with health, with life, with happiness and success. And the question is, why? Didn't we say before about the judgment? It needs to be truthful and transparent. Now you're telling me, doesn't matter what you do, you qualify for the overdraft protection. So I will tell you the following. Even though that we do have an overdraft protection, but there is one catch with this statement that I didn't say. We don't know what's our credit line. Like. How many times? We don't know how many times yeah. we can use a lifeline. Right. I know the game is three lifelines. Three lifelines. Okay? In, 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 in Shamaim, I don't know. Probably it's a thousand lifelines. Okay? Plenty of them. But it says, why did Akadosh Baruch Hu gives them the blessing if the person themselves is not deserving? And now the B. Moshe Cordova is going to tell us a secret. Two words. Zehut Avot. The merit, not only of Rabbi Ishaq and Yaakov, our previous generations, because if our previous generations don't keep the flame of Judaism alive, we will not be here in the world as Jewish people. We will be like the Goim. God forbid. So if that effort by our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, going all the way to Moshe Rabbeinu, Abraham, Ishaq, and Yaakov, we will not be here today. So therefore it says that God, in the zehut of the Avot, gives them beracha until God decides to change the music. You know what? I'm going to send you a message. I'm going to send you a wake-up call. I'm going to send you a friendly reminder that I'm waiting for you. And that friendly reminder comes in many shapes and forms. Could be challenges through life, could be difficulties in life, God forbid. Could, could be that a, th a thousand answers. I don't even know what to say. But hiccups through life, it's all inclusive. And therefore, it says, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, and it says that the same thing, it comes with our interaction with people. That even though intellectually we can justify and say, this person is a wicked Jew. Rasha. And I don't like to use these words as part of my vocabulary. But I'm using this extreme example so the person understands what Rabbi Moshe Cordovero wants to say. He says, why should I honor him? Why should I bring him closer? This guy does have it left and right. Says Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, hold on a minute. He's your brother. He's a descendant of Abraham, he's Hakan Yaakov, like you are. He's a descendant of a dynasty of good Jewish people. And therefore, he says, even though they may not be the most kosher people, the fathers and grandparents were. And guess what? The moment that you insult someone, you're insulting the previous generations. I'm going to use an expression which I'm not going to use it, but in all languages, there are words that are curses. Okay? In English, there is son of. In Spanish, or in Portuguese, also, hijo de. My question is, why are you blaming the parents? The guy or the mother? The guy did the mistake. Has it? Why are you cursing the parents? That curse is from the Bimoshe Cordovero's explanation of today. It says, when you're cursing someone, you are saying the parents did wrong. The grandparents did wrong. And the Bimoshe Cordovero says, how do you have the audacity to cast the blame on the parents? Sure, there are situations that like father, like son. Really? God forbid. 
but to overall to scratch out the person and cursing the parents, it is unacceptable. Unacceptable. That a person made a mistake, okay. But to the point that you're gonna curse them, who gave you the permission to curse? Curse is not allowed. Anybody tells you you're allowed to curse? So why you do it? That's what the Rimoshe Cordovero says. So the question is, so then what do we do? You know what the Rimoshe Cordovero says? Pray for them. Pray for them to do Teshuvah. When you say, Yashiveno Avinu Letorateja, put in your mind names of people to do Teshuvah. I have a list, by the way. It's here, not in paper. And regretfully, that list doesn't get shorter. Sometimes I have to swap names because of miracles. And by the way, by the way, by the way, Rabbeinu Ari says that if you know or you have someone that can benefit, let's say, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, someone is involved on something problematic. Not kasher. I have two cases. One addiction to drugs, another gambling, and another hanging around with Goim. Different missionot, challenges, addictions, and forbidden relationships. Says Rabbeinu Ari, through the month of Elul, an aseret yemet teshuvah, every time you have an opportunity in the Amida, in the blessing of Ashivenu Avinu Letoratecha, which is the second blessing after wisdom. First we pray for wisdom, then we pray for Teshuvah, to return. So it says, before the Beracha, Baruch Atta Hashem Teshuvah, insert your own prayer for Teshuvah. Not only for you. If you have a son, you have a brother, if you have a child, if you have a friend, if you have a relative, you're going to tell me that you don't know anyone that can benefit from Teshuvah? We all know. Everybody, but if you know, but if you know people who really need it, like a, like, like a how do you call this in the military? They need an extraction from the Tum'ah. Because what does it mean that a person has an addiction, God forbid, or a person is involved in a forbidden relationship? That's, it simply means that the person was kidnapped by the ways of Tum'ah. That's what it means spiritually. And could be even a testimony that this Neshama was so great that Tum'ah kidnapped him. And by the way, this is one of the things that Rabbi Mansur mentioned last night. Remember, the Neshama of Rabbi Akiva was kidnapped by Esav. And then came, that's why if you put Rabbi Akiva, he's going to give you the name of Yaakov. Find the name Yaakov in the name Akiva is there. No Gilgul. <laughs> Kidnapping. I self kidnapped Rabbi Akiva. Now, I'm giving you a 30-second statement out of an hour and five minutes lecture. But soon we'll be up in Aitorah, or I'll send it, and you'll get to hear it. But why did I self kidnap the Neshama of Rabbi Akiva? Very simple. Because Rabbi Akiva was greater than Moshe Rabbeinu. And that's why when the Torah was about to be given, Moshe says to Akadosh Baruch Hu, give the Torah through the Bi Akiva. And God says, thank you, but I need them later on. You are here today, you give the Torah. But if someone asks you, who could have the Torah been given besides Moshe Rabbeinu? Short answer, the Bi Akiva. So Yaakov Avinu kidnapped the letters the, the life of Rabbi Akiva, and that's why the Pasuk says, by Yaakevenize, when Yaakov Avino was born, he hold them by the by the by the heel, and Ekev are the letters Akiva. Same letters, Ayn Kof Bet. This is how Yaakov is called. Yaakov now became a Navy SEAL. 
he he extracted the neshama of Rabbi Akiva, and then we know the rest of the story. And I'm only give you a sample, just to give you a sample ice cream. Listen to the class, unbelievable hidushim we heard last night. Some of them we discussed them in the past, but many of them were first time heard. You know, and there are more things that he says. So it says that pray, pray. Pray for them to do Teshuvah. Now, at, okay, Baruch Hashem, uh, we finish up to today's current class, and it says at the end of this chapter, and it says, avoid diverting your mind from any of the lessons that we learned in the past nine days between calmness, praying for others, tolerance, avoiding anger, encouraging, giving people the benefit of the doubt, praying for people. And not only for the Fuah Sherema. Many people pray for the Fuah Sherema. But remember the Birkat Amazon that says, the Fuah Sherema, the Fuah Tanefesh, the Fuah Taguf. I want you to have a complete speedy recovery, emotional, or spiritual and physical. Because at the end of the day, the physics and the spirits are connected. That's the life of a Jew. A life of a Gentile is mostly connected to the physical aspect of life. Sure, there are exceptions. There are wonderful Gentiles. These are called the righteous Gentiles of the world, that they have certain spiritual awakening connecting with God, helping the Jewish people, saving the Jewish people like it happened through the Holocaust. Yep. How many righteous Gentiles were there? But the life of a Jew, as we discussed many, many times, is the, 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 the correct combination connecting the spiritual with the physical. When that is done, we are in the right track. Okay, my good friends? Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. So, Baruch Hashem, we are coming with the Tomer de Borah. So, tomorrow, uh, we'll start now moving to plan B. How do I activate everything that I said? You know, for the, we, we have nine quick classes. Now, I need the, 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 to do, I need the manual. You're telling me what to do. Chazaku Baruch. The question is, how do I do it? Tomorrow we'll start play by play training. Training, okay. Baruch Adonai le Olam Amen be Amen be Hanani Amen Kashom Amen Tzak Kadosh Baruch Hu Lizakot Ati Selfi Chak Irbal Ein Torah Mizbot Shneimal Adonai Hafez 